Welcome to the Calyrex Game Corner's Pokemon D&D campaign, featuring Cindy, a young vagabond from the Hoenn region with pyromaniac tendencies, Gimli, a stocky, burly miner from Sinnoh looking for his lost son, Elodie, an enthusiastic foodie and baker from Kalos, and Schmidt, an enigmatic man from Johto with a duck. My name is Rich, and I'm the Game Master, and this is Dunsparce and Drampa. Good morning to Schmidt. He wakes up in the luxurious bed and breakfast that the Quacko Paco had elected to stay at the night prior. And because of how quaint and pleasant and lush the commodities are, he wakes up feeling incredibly refreshed. The best sleep he's had in weeks. So refreshed, in fact, he gets 1d8 of inspiration to use at any point today. Please write that down. Oh, what? Okay. In addition to my inspiration? Yes, it is. That I already had? Okay. Yeah, this is temporary inspiration. That is a result of your physical state. Temp inspiration. Okay. If you do not use it, it will go away as opposed to your other one. Schmidt rolls out of his lovely, comfortable bed. And there is the smell of breakfast in the air. Uh, what is Schmidt's course of action here? Oh, I didn't think about there being breakfast. Okay. Schmidt wants to find Sam. Okay. And then see if they want to uh, grab a grab a cup of coffee together. Okay, sure. You exit the hall and everyone has their own little rooms. Uh, two of the doors of your party are open and well, not open, but says it, like there's no one in there. Clearly, uh, there's a little sign that says they're away. And then two of the doors have a little sign that says they are sleeping. Uh, do you go to the door that Sam is in? Is Sam's one of the ones that's marked that it's sleeping. Yeah, or just like you know, do not disturb. Oh, kind of thing. Yeah, I'll do a light knock. Okay, roll like not- perception. Perception. Okay. Uh, I always forget my modifiers every time. Uh, twelve. Twelve. Listening as you approach the door. You can tell that uh, whoever is in there, no, probably Sam, is awake, but there's another person in the room. What? You hear another voice. You can't discern anything about it, but there is another voice in the room. Do I eavesdrop or not? That is up to you. <clears throat> uh, just for a second. Okay. Give me another perception check. Oh, <laughs> I guess I'm not. It's two uh, on the dice. So three total. Three? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can't really make out any words. Uh, give me an insight. I want you to keep rolling. Give me an insight. 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 If that doesn't work, Schmidt's just going to knock on the door. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, no insight roll? You're just going to knock? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you do so. Um, you hear like a pause in the conversation and then some shuffling. And then Sam comes to the door. Uh, she looks a little tired, but she's like not in her PJ. She's wearing some casual wear, and she says, "Oh, good morning, Schmidt." Hey, uh, I was wondering if uh, now would be a good time to grab a cup of coffee. Uh, she kind of peeks over her shoulder, and she says, uh, "I'm a little busy right now. Uh, maybe in like thirty minutes or so." Uh, okay, sure. I'll just uh, meet you downstairs. She says, "Yeah, sure. Sounds good." Okay. Schmidt's going to start to walk away. Okay. And then wait for her to close the door, then go back and try to make another. <laughs> another jump a little bit. Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, add five to it because she thinks you're gone. Uh, okay. Um, that's a 25 then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You hear very well. Um, you hear a masculine voice in there and they're discussing and they're having a conversation and it seems kind of like, like, it seems like a serious tone, but it also seems like they don't like they don't hate each other, but like they're they're discussing something of importance. You hear you hear the man's voice say, well, I know you haven't been in touch with him for a while. Things are going on. Things are happening. And I think it would be good for you to, you know, talk to dad and Symmetra. You hear her voice get a little angry for a second. She says, that man is not my father. And the guy says, I know, I know you're on that again. It's, but I think it would be the right thing to do after all he's done for you. And Symmetra says, he has done nothing for me. And then uh, you hear the sound 
of what sounds like Weavile, but there's two voices. It sounds like they're like play fighting, like little cats. Hmm. Okay. Do you listen more? I'll have you start making stealth checks if you listen more. Prolonged stealth checks? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I rolled a 15. What is... Uh, for stealth? Dex. Oh, plus three. So, yeah. 18. Yeah, you're fine. You hear the man's voice say, You've been here for a while, Artie. Why? What have you been doing? Have you Artie? just been working? Are, are you still... Are you still on that mission? And then she says, of, of course, I'm not going to give up just like that. And also, it's beautiful here. I like being away. This is really nice. I have a good job. I have good friends. I met these, these adventurers, and we've been, it's been going really well. And the man's voice says, OK, I get it. I just I want to check in with you and let you know what's going on. And Symmetra says, well, I do enjoy seeing you. It's been a while, brother. Yeah, Schmidt's like, like if there was a camera, Schmidt uh-huh. is like making faces at the camera, being like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like as silently as possible. And then she, he, she says, "Brother," and then Schmidt like puts his whole fist in his mouth and is like, "Oh!" <laughs> and then after that, Schmidt like leaves. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, do you go downstairs for? breakfast are you leaving are you going to meet her outside or what what's your plan yes and he's very like frantically i think just downstairs yeah just probably in the whatever breakfast they have there yeah cool um but he's also like frantically like (laughs) like you can tell he's having like a small panic attack while like he's putting like the food on the plate or whatever he like keeps dropping stuff and yeah absolutely um make it make a dex check actually dex check okay yeah (laughs) <laughs> the dice know what I want. Yeah. Uh, plus three, that's an eight. eight yeah. Um, Schmidt is gathering food at this like little... It's like continental, continental breakfast, but it's mm-hmm. a lot nicer. It's like pretty fancy. And he ends up like just... He's kind of nervous energy. Maybe it's the conversation he overheard. Maybe it's the gym challenge. Maybe it's both. Um, he ends up like dropping a pancake. Uh, and it makes a very satisfying slap on the ground. <laughs> Um, and people's conversations stop and they kind of turn towards to look at Schmidt for a second. And then a little orange lizard wearing a little apron with a little tail that's on fire runs up to Schmidt with a new pancake on a plate and grins at Schmidt. Oh, thank you. That's adorable. Yes. Uh, it gives you a happy smile and it runs back to the kitchen and, uh, you have a new pancake. It's good. Okay. Uh, you just going to sit down and wait for Sam at this point. Just chilling. Yeah. Okay, sure, cool. You're enjoying your breakfast. Give me another perception check. We're rolling lots of perceptions. Wisdom. 16. 16, cool. From where you're sitting, you're able to see as someone comes down from the stairs from the floor that you're staying in, and you, they are not someone you recognize. Uh, they are a man who is probably in his mid to late 20s. He has crimson-colored red hair that goes down to his shoulders, and uh, he is wearing uh, kind of like a dark blue kind of ensemble. And he's followed by a Weavile. Hmm. He is okay. exiting the building. Do you continue to eat your breakfast? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think Schmidt like, might take a couple of bites, but he wants to wait for Symmetra before he's like full on like eating breakfast, you know? Okay, cool. Um, a good just like couple minutes later, Symmetra comes down. Uh She's wearing some casual kind of streetwear. She, her hair's a little bit wet because she just took a shower. And she sees you and she waves and she comes over and she says, hey, good to see you. Hey. Uh, 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 did, you, did, you, did you sleep well? Uh, she looks at you and says, yeah, actually, I haven't slept this well in weeks, honestly. It was like being in my own bed, but better. Yeah, beds here are great, huh? She says, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll grab some coffee. If you if you if you drop a pancake, a little Charmander will come and give you a new pancake just to let you know. She giggles and she says, that sounds really cute. I might just do it just to see the Charmander. (laughs) Uh, She goes, she gets a cup of coffee and uh, she comes back. She has a single pancake on a plate. Uh, She she did not drop it, apparently. Okay, okay, but yeah, Schmidt's just like asking questions about like her family, where she's from, just like trying to get to know her kind of stuff. 
Okay. Sure. Roll me charisma first. Charisma. Dude, it, <laughs> I'm like happy, but also nervous because I just crit again. But I'm scared I'm using all my crits that I need for the gym. Oh, yeah. So you got a crit? I did get a crit, yes. Okay. Um, Sam is very open. Uh, she is communicating a lot to you. I'm curious, because you rolled well, like, what do you want to ask? I was going to, like, depending on the role, I would just give you the information that she shared. But at this point, she's willing to share a lot. I'm not going to say everything, but a lot. She'll yeah, answer uh... any question. But she might not give all the details. Okay. I think what I mentioned earlier, family, um, where she's from, what growing up was like, like kind of datey kind of questions, you know? Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just basic backstory is basically what Schmidt is looking for. Okay. She starts off and she says, well, I was born in the Sinnoh region. I moved around quite a bit, honestly. Um, I lived there until I was a, just a toddler, about, you know, three or four years old only child. Um, I lost my father in a terrible work accident. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I was really too young to kind of internalize it or process it, but it hit my mom really hard. And uh, it came to a point where she just couldn't take care of me anymore. So a, oh, a, fam no. uh, a family friend ended up uh, adopting me, um, which was very, very generous. I ended up moving to Blackthorn. I'm sure you're familiar with Blackthorn. You're from Johto, right? Yeah. I didn't know you were from my neck of the woods. She says, yeah, I more or less grew up in Johto. Uh, Johto. Okay. I, I spent quite a bit of time there until I was ready to kind of break into the professional sphere. And through some networking and some contacts, I ended up landing a job that took me to Hoenn. So that's kind of how I ended up here. And I've been here for probably about five years at this point. Okay. I don't know if I'm actually familiar with what you actually do. She says, right now, I work at the Hoenn branch of Silphco. I am the Technology Innovation Development Administrator, which is a, a funny title, but usually just people call me the DA, the Development Administrator. Um, and I really like my job. I work with software and emerging technology, and we try and create comfortable experiences for users in professional and business environments, really. Okay, wow. That's a really cool job. Do you enjoy it? She says, yeah, I really like working with Pokemon and people. Uh, I think I'm a pretty good leader, at least when it comes to dealing with tasks that I'm good at. Uh, it's, it's pretty fulfilling. It's nice. And because they have me on, going on a lot of field research uh, and just I have a lot of vacation hours, it's, it's a really cushy position, I think. Yeah, that was my next question. If you're like a software engineer, what are you doing out here in the, in the wild? <laughs> uh, she laughs and she says, well, as I said, I have a lot of flexibility. Um, I'm able to do a lot of work remotely, which I appreciate quite a bit. Um, I have a really competent team, so I don't need to be around them very much. Uh, sometimes they'll call me for questions, but for the most part, I can just kind of do my own thing. And we have all these really long-scale projects, long-term project where we're where we're developing a product or we're working with a potential client, and I'm just not really needed. And because I'm just w working my salary, I get to go on little trips. And sometimes, you know, I I would treat this Meteor Falls trip as it's more it's it's like seventy percent personal, thirty percent business. I think. I'm really curious to see how um, this this native, the native of Hoenians that live in Meteor Falls, uh, they've lived there for centuries, for millennia almost. And you know, while she wants to go visit to be to witness the spectacle, to see the ceremony that they're all doing, um, she's also really curious how she can take a step within her career to better serve the other people of Hoenn. Okay, wow, that's really admirable. She says thanks. It's it's really more for myself than anything, but I'm I'm curious. Cool, cool. Uh, out of respect, she will ask you similar questions. You're welcome yeah. to answer them. Um, you don't. Yeah, have he's gonna. To. Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, he's gonna okay. he's gonna play along. He's gonna drop the big uh, mom is a gym leader. Uh, oh, um, this yeah. is big for the listeners too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did okay. they not know? No, they don't. Okay, yeah, mom is a uh, Whitney. From the Goldenrod City Gym. Yeah. Uh, so Sam has a look of surprise and she says, Wow, she's notorious. I heard she's really tough. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of translates to family life too. She says, Oh no. Is she a tough mom? Yeah. Um a lot of 
I don't know, forced Pokemon school, Pokemon battling growing up. Whenever I got out on my own, I just didn't want any of it, you know? Um, so I just got an office job working uh, insurance. I was just doing errors and claims, you know, really boring stuff. Um, I moved in, met this guy named Nick uh, through my mom. He was a gym trainer at the gym that my mom runs. Uh, we moved in and then he just disappeared one day. But he left behind this far-fetched that named Quacko. And we've become really good friends since then. Is Quacko, like, with you? Yeah, I imagine he was, like... <laughs> he had, like, his own, like, separate chair. And then, like... I don't know, I'm trying to think of it. Because I want him to, like, pop up over the table. But I can't... Unless he's eating on the floor. And I don't want him to eat on the floor. Because he's <laughs> Quacko. He he could just, like, kind of pull vault onto the top of the chair or something. Right? <laughs> uh, he's, in like a, he's in, like, a high chair. <laughs> wait yeah for sure grab like one of the high chairs the whole time. yes no yeah he's been there the whole time in a high chair that's great yes yeah sneasel or weavile frostbite is on the floor but farfetch <laughs> is about a high chair that's great uh sam yeah. so so needless to say when you say quacko farfetch gets like he, his attention is drawn because yeah yeah that. yeah that's very funny um sam takes surprise at what you said about being forced into battling as a kid. She says, wow, but you're such a good battler. I thought you'd been doing it all your life. I mean, I guess you were, but you didn't enjoy it. Yeah, no, just, um, I don't know. Expectations forced on you when you're young, especially when you don't want to do it. Just gets kind of rough, you know? She says, yeah, yeah, I think I can understand that. Cool, cool. Any other topics you want to bring up? Mm-hmm. Anything you want to discuss? You're both finishing up your breakfast. Uh, yeah, but- yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. We covered work. We covered growing up. I uh-huh. got kind of a read on her personality, uh-huh. which is really all I want. Um, yeah, no, I think we're good. Okay. Just kind of uh, casual conversation. Yeah. Just chatting, that. chatting, just having a, a good little time. Uh, yeah, she yeah, asks, yeah. So you're going to go challenge the gym today. When are you thinking about doing that? Uh, I've got a little training and a little planning I want to do, but, uh, probably right after that. Okay, cool. Um, I will let you just confirm that you're done. You did crit your charisma. So Sam has your attention until you're done. She will not run away. Yes, um, I am done. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, she said, well, I'll leave you to your training. I'll uh, go back to my room and maybe do some shopping. I don't know. Uh, check in with me when you finish your challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I'll try and come find you. Okay. Uh, phase two. Uh, training. So, I only have f- four Pokemon with me in Quacko, correct? Correct. Okay. Schmidt's probably gonna find like a like a like a spot like out in the woods. Okay. Um. And temporarily, he's going to box Jessica. Okay. So he has Richie, Patricia, Skarmory, and Meryl Cheap with him. Interesting. That Jessica gets boxed before the Electric Gym. Okay, go on. Okay, uh, this is just temporary. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but uh, so Schmidt has two rare candies. Okay. He's going to give one to Quacko. Okay. And one to Meryl Cheap. Damn. So Quacko's going to be at nine. Yeah. And Meryl uh, Cheap is going to be at eight. Okay. You feed a rare, rare candy to Quacko. Uh, you, it must have an incredible flavor or something, because Quacko just perks up immediately and just is coursing with energy and seems fully ready to battle. Um, you give your other rare candy to Meryl Cheap, and Meryl Cheap begins to glow. Oh, an incredible, shit. brilliant white light. That's not and what I played with. Okay. screeching sound. You press B. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, and then after, after a brief moment, Meryl Cheap has grown quite a bit bigger, quite a bit more powerful looking. Uh, Meryl Cheap is now a Talon Flame. You picked the perfect level to give a rare candy. Oh, shit. Okay. I was just trying to, like, even out the levels of my team. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> nope. You have, you have a Talon Flame now. You have to deal with it. Okay. Uh, Meryl Cheap seems, like, grateful, like, happy, stoked to be powerful. Uh, okay. Um, you fed some rare candies. What's the rest of your training plan? Uh, okay. 
So I have some bullshit that um, I want to run by you. Uh, I love bullshit. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, so let me get this set up. So you know how... And it's totally okay, because this is really out there. If you just say no and put a kibosh on it. Um, I, I'd never want to do that. Okay. You know how in uh, in Avatar, how like Zuko can redirect lightning? Yeah. Okay. What do you think about Skarmory having some kind of similar ability? Because its body's made out of metal. Yeah. Uh, it'll be tough, because it, if it fails, it's going to be bad. Um, right. My head thought is like... Like, one wing, like, it uses steel wing, and then it puts its wing in the ground. Yeah. And then it acts kind of as a lightning rod to, like, no. filter the damage. I think that's sick and totally reasonable. I think it's going to require a check of some sort. I'm going to say probably constitution. Okay. Um, and uh, if it fails, it's just gonna it's just going to suck. It needs to be done at some sort of expense to you. Uh, mm-hmm. I was thinking, like, because I'm using steel wing, so, like, that would be my turn. Oh, you just, just avoid damage? Yeah. Steal wing into the ground and yeah. have the constitution to withstand the charge. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say, what's, what's Garmory's con? Uh, 14. That's actually its highest stat. Okay. I'm thinking either 15 or 16 as the save to not take damage. Uh, okay. 10 is certainly too low. Let's say 15. 15? Okay. Yeah. So with a <laughs> DC 15 con save... Skarmory can withstand an electric attack with a steel wing into the ground, and you will consume PP. Is, is that fair? Yeah, that sounds okay. balanced to me. I like that idea. That's good. What else you got? Is that the only bullshit you have? Uh, yeah. Um, well, I have some other bullshit, but that's we're saving, saving that for it. the gym leader. Yeah, <laughs> got it. All right then. Um, um, yeah. So, well, uh, to RP it, I was going to practice it as Richie using electric attacks on Skarmory to train it to try to do that yeah no yeah exactly we have this concept fleshed out but we haven't practiced it so Mm -hmm. do that um i don't know if you need to legitimately just like roll attacks for richie but have skarmory give it a try a couple of times to see how it goes i guess i can roll an attack yeah that's if you want i mean it's just the damage won't matter and you are going to hit because it's allied targets hitting each other okay so Am I just rolling the constitution, I guess? Just I think so. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think Richie's damage matters. because. Okay, I rolled an 18. Okay. I'm scared getting all these high rolls now. <laughs> yeah. Well, for this first attempt, you know, Schmidt's been thinking about this for a while. Like, mm-hmm. a, a clever way to beat Watson. And then found Skarmory in the desert and was like, oh, this is a thought. Uh, you know, Buford, right? That's their name? Yes, right. Buford. Yeah. Buford digs its steel feathers into the ground. And Richie hits them with an electric attack, and they are able to channel it into the ground and avoid taking damage. Sick. It seems like it could work. It could work. Okay. That's all I need. Yeah. Uh, Okay. So we are going to go back to the PC. Mm -hmm. Um, We are going to trade out Richie back for Jessica. Okay. So the current party lineup is Quacko, Jessica, Patricia, Skarmory. Meryl okay, Cheap. and and Meryl Cheap? Yep. Yeah, that is five. Okay, great. Um, with that training and practice and conceptualizing being done, do you go to the gym? Yep. Okay, Schmidt. Walks towards the Fallville Crawlway, which is the name of this underground tunnel that's being designed. Who knows for what mining, transportation, it has some sort of industrial purpose, but it is now where the Mauville Gym is temporarily being held. Um, he walks through the open archway of the mine, and there is the characteristic attendant who is receiving training cards and acting as security, and he says hello and asks for your trainer card. Hello, and I hand him my trainer card. Cool. He takes and a look I at also it. mentioned, like, hey, I've taken this once before, um, back when it was at the actual gym. Watson said something about, like, a back door for re-challenges. Do you know anything about that? He looks at your trainer card, and he says, yeah, that looks correct. Uh, right this way. And rather than walking further into the mine, there's a little entryway that is behind where the attendant is standing, and there is a mine cart that <laughs> um, you are welcome to get in. <laughs> yeah, okay. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, he says this will take you right to Watson. Good luck. Um, and he kind of has to like push it to get it going, and it grinds a little bit, and then you get moving. Um, this these mines are interesting and beautiful. Uh, roll of perception. Okay. Schmidt is holding his knees, by the way. Yeah, of course. Uh, seven. <laughs> cool. Uh, the mine cart's whipping around at like you know probably like fifteen miles per hour. It's not zooming, but it's also not slow. It's it's a little anxious inducing but it's not too bad um and you can see lining the walls and the ceilings of the dark mine are like little glowing orbs yellow colored orbs are all over the place and uh it just is a nice look it's pleasant you zoom around and then the minecart takes a swift right turn around a corner and you end up at a large metal platform suspended above the ground um there you see a man with a white beard and white hair in a wheelchair and he says schmidt you came back <laughs> welcome hi he just lets out like a little wave great he says are you ready for a rematch schmidt uh as ready as i'll ever be he says great i've got no new surprises my pokemon might be a little bit stronger we've been doing some training but besides the new environment this battle will be very similar be prepared for a single battle with three pokemon Three. Okay. Okay. I have my game plan. Okay. Um, as you say that, or as you tell me, it doesn't really matter which, that you have a game mm -hmm. plan. Um, you notice that the suspended metal platform uh, has little electrodes, not the Pokemon, but like little sticks with plasma coils on them, and they charge up, and so there's kind of an electric force field that's around the battle area, and you notice that all of your Pokeballs, uh, they're, the red buttons, or the buttons on them glow red. They've been activated by the Volt Switch. Yep, I remember this. Watson sends out his first Pokemon. It is a chubby little rat with a long black tail and a lightning bolt on the end, and it has yellow cheeks. It is Raichu. Who do you send out first? Skarmory. Skarmory hits the field. Um, its metal feet clank against the metal platform that you are standing on. Uh, roll your initiative. That is 15. Raichu got 17. Dang, okay. Raichu will be going first. Raichu looks at Buford, the newest member of Schmidt's team, and it flings its tail towards Buford, and out of its tail slings a sticky web made of electricity, trying okay. to make contact with Skarmory. Um, I think that's above 20 to hit. Are you asking me if that hits? No, but I'm just kind of confirming that that hits. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. that hits. Okay. Um, incoming electric type damage. Uh, thirteen points. No, 13. it's super effective. I forgot. Twenty six. Uh, it's more. Okay, I'll let you choose because I failed to roll it. Do you want me to just double it, or do you want me to roll two more d six and see what happens? Roll two more d six. <laughs> okay. You came out on top. Uh, twenty three. Twenty three points of electric type damage, and a web encompasses Buford, and they are stuck to the ground. Uh, so this is the bullshit. Okay. Uh, spikes. Ooh! <laughs> I didn't even make that connection when that is not at that move. That's so yes. cool. Oh, that's so good. Wow. Okay, yeah. Read it to me and read it to the audience. Uh, as an action, the user may set a trap of spikes that hurts the creature that I brought into battle, creating tough terrain where applicable. Once a trap is set, you may spend a reaction dealing sure hit ground damage to hostile opponents that are brought into initiative. Using this move again can increase the damage dice up to 2d10. Dog, that's insane. How did I not <laughs> even think that that was crazy that I gave that to you? Wow, okay. Yes, you do that. Um, one layer of spikes is set against Watson's side of the field and a, a little uh, furrowed brow and a drop of sweat appears on Watson's face as he is a little concerned about this technique. Yes. Um, regardless, the Volt Switch activates, and it recalls Raichu and sends out Magneton. The Volt Switch must make a dexterity check to actually capture Skarmory now that it is covered in an Electro Web. Oh, shit. It fails. Skarmory oh. stays in versus oh, Magneton. Okay. But the spikes, because now that it has jumped in? Yep, roll that reaction. That is, okay, so that's 1d10 plus 4, it, but it said sure hit ground type. Is that typed damage? It is. It's 2d10. So, 2d10 plus 4. Okay. Yeah. That is... Uh, math. Holy shit. 17 points of damage. A free damage? Very cool. <laughs> yes. Excellent. 
That's such a great way to start. Um, the Magneton hits the field and it kind of just floats gently above the field, but these these spikes that have been set are kind of like pointed and they're like, um, uh, what are those called? Jacks, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, yeah I know exactly what you're and, talking yeah, about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what they look like. And, and Magneton kind of draws itself into them. It's uh, magnetism in combination with the spiky spikes is not good for it. And it immediately takes a significant chunk of damage. That being said, uh, Watson is first on the initiative order and Magneton will fire off a Thunderbolt into Skarmory and rolls a nine. Nine to hit? Yeah. That does not hit. The Thunderbolt goes wide. While Skarmory is covered in webs, it still is able to move and uh, it is able to nimbly dodge out of the way. What will Skarmory do? Um, we're going to hit the second layer of spikes. There we go. No need to roll that. It happens. Skarmory shoots out spikes from its wings, and even more little jacks cover the field. Pretty terrifying. Um, the Volt Switch activates, returns Magneton, sends out Manectric. The Volt Switch is going to have an easier time now that the web is has been on, but it still has to roll to try and recall Skarmory. Mm -hmm. um, it succeeds. Who's your second mon? Jessica. Okay. Jessica hits the field versus Manectric. Manectric's taking damage. Roll it. So that's 4d10 now? Uh, what, what does the text suggest? It's, it's super effective. Yeah, it yeah. says it's super effective and it's 2d10 because I have two layers. Yeah, that's 4d10. <laughs> okay, that's uh, 4d10 plus 4. That's 21 <laughs> points of ground type damage. It wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't the gimmick of the gym, <laughs> you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh my god, that's that's wild. I, okay, I thought of this, but I didn't remember spikes being ground type damage. So I yep. knew I was getting that chip, but I didn't know it was going to be. I was getting these uh, chunks. You know, in the video games, they're not. I just wanted to unify it with Stealth Rock. Um, but yeah, that's wild. Uh, Manetric hits the field, gets immediately bombarded with spikes, and they hurt a lot. Not ideal. Um, despite that, Manetric is going to charge forward with its jaws a sparkin. Going for a Thunder Fang. That is a 20 to hit. Uh, yes, that does. Dirty it. 20. Actually, it's Jessica. It's a ground type. Oh, yeah. I was thinking we're still up against Buford. Yeah. Watson doesn't recognize this Pokemon. He might have seen it from before, but all he remembered was that Schmidt was a flying type trainer and that he should have an easy time with electro type moves. However, Jessica is a rare species, a ground type Oricorio, and does not take damage from Thunder Fang. Jessica. Sick, sick. Uh, Revelation Dance. Let's, Let's see it. We are crushing it today. This was some, like, Pokemon Challenges level, like, prep I've been doing for this. <laughs> yeah, that's a 10. 10 to Jessica, hit. Jessica, Jessica, I need you to hit these. <laughs> Why do you always choke at this gym? <laughs> Jessica is not comfortable dancing on a metal platform without some sort of soft rug or something underneath it. It's, it's better on the ground. It loves the ground. It doesn't like that it's on a platform. The Revelation Dance does not connect. The dish moves are nice, but the ground type effect does not hit. Uh, the Volt Switch activates, but has no question withdrawing both of these Pokemon. Raichu comes back out. Who is your third mon of choice? Patricia. Patricia, the beautiful Altaria, hits the field versus Raichu. Raichu goes first. Raichu. Just gonna go for that clean Thunderbolt. Cheeks a Sparkin, gets a 24 to hit, rolling damage, dealing a neutral amount of damage because of Patricia's dragon typing, resisting oh, wait. Uh We didn't do spikes damage, did we? We didn't. We'll do that okay. after. Okay. Uh, Raichu hasn't taken any damage yet. Gotcha. Uh, dealing a total of 19 points of electric type damage. 19. And you can okay. you can do spikes now if you'd like. It doesn't I don't think it can one shot right you, so I don't think it matters. Okay, spikes damage. Two, two. This is broken. Um, plus four, twenty seven. Excellent. Uh, and now Patricia also gets a turn. Yep, it's time for Patricia to go. Uh, Patricia's gonna hit this dragon breath. Cool. Which is a save from them. Uh huh. With for a what's DC that? sixteen. Dex save? Uh, dex save, yes. Thankfully, Raichu is quite dexterous, and they do get a 19 to save. Okay. Um, 
Like they still take damage, correct? Uh, all targets and blasts must make a dex save, taking half as much damage on a save. Okay. Uh, 13 divided in half. You want to do the high one or the roll? The lower. It'd be a six. Lower? Six. Okay. Six points off Dragon Breath. Six points of dragon type damage as Patricia looses a bluish, purplish, yellowish beam of draconic energy towards Raichu. Raichu is not able to fully dodge out of the way of the blast and takes some dragon damage. The Volt Switch activates. Raichu is returned and out comes Magneton. Patricia is returned and out comes Buford the Skarmory. Magneton will be taking Spike's damage. Spike's damage. Can't believe I didn't even think about that with this gym. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Skarmory has Spikes. That's cool. It makes sense. Jeez, dude. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, God, I'm always forgetting the modifier. For Plus clarity, four. For clarity for the listeners, uh, Schmidt did not choose to teach Skarmory spikes. He caught Skarmory and it had spikes. Yeah. So 20 points of ground type damage. <laughs> for free. For free. <laughs> That's stupid. Okay. Um, yeah. Magneton approaching about half HP despite being a bulky steel type. Uh, pretty concerned about the shenanigans that's going on. I'm going to loose a Thunderbolt towards Buford. We never established what our our move um, can I do that on reaction or do I have to preemptively I, I do think, that? I think it has to be a reaction. Yeah. But it would be your whole action. Does that I, make sense? I'm, I, I accept that, yes. Yeah. Okay. Should it be before the result is called though? I don't know. Um, I'd say roll, yeah, roll to hit, and then if I'm to call it, I call it after the roll to hit, right? Yeah, I just feel like that might give you too much. A little too much power, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Because then you... You know what? Let's let's do it to where if they just call the attack before they roll to hit, I'm calling the reaction. Yes. I think that's Once fair. It, yeah, if then the you attack don't is know. announced, yeah. then you can call the reaction, but I think if it, if it, whether it hits or not is announced, I don't think that's fair. So that being said, I haven't told you if it hit or not. Are you going to go for the technique? Yes. Okay. How are they going to do it? Describe uh, it. This steel wing, like in the show, you know how like their wings glow like white? And yeah. then Skarmory's going to like prep up and then just shove one wing into the ground and has one wing up in the air. Okay. For super clarity, just want to make sure you want to do this technique with this terrain. Hmm. Yeah, we'll try it once. Okay. Because I know it's a platform suspended, but... Yes. The idea is it's still redirecting, right? Yes. I I, I can't just... Have Schmidt make a roll, please. <laughs> An roll. intelligence okay. check. Yeah, please. An intelligence check. I need to make okay. sure that this is a fair game element. Uh, 10 on that intelligence check. Uh, that's right in the middle. Do you, well, do you have any modifiers? Uh, that was with a modifier. It rolled an eight. Okay. Um, Schmidt's feeling pretty confident about this technique. He thinks it's rad. He thinks it's cool. He does acknowledge mm-hmm. that um, the environment he's battling in and where he's sticking the steel wing is, in fact, different than ha- where he was doing it outside. But he doesn't really conceptualize anything about that. Okay. Okay. Um, I rolled for Thunderbolt. Magneton rolled a 13 to hit. Okay. That would not have broken the armor class anyways. Okay. As Buford saw Magneton charging up its electric energy, it stabbed its metal wings into the metal platform that is suspended above the ground in this cave. Uh, thankfully, uh, because Magneton's eyes were all screwy and, and not focused due to the spikes, its thunderbolt went wide. Now, the Volt Switch activates and both Pokemon are recalled. Out comes Manectric versus Jessica. And that is 20 points of spikes damage. 20 points of spikes damage. Manectric also automatically just about below half HP. Um, looks at Jessica. Acknowledges that electric type attacks will not work. Will fire off a burst of flame from its mouth in a flame burst and request a DC 16 dexterity save from Jessica. Okay. Uh, with the modifier, that is a 19. Okay. That is a save. Mm-hmm. Um, there will still be some damage. Yep. Uh, seven points of fire type damage as Manectric fires off a blast. As a bonus action, Manectric will charge forwards towards Jessica and use a quick attack. Ooh. 
um, with a 13 to hit. Uh, that does not hit. Does not hit. Jessica dances out of the way and Manectric jumps past Jessica. What will Jessica do in retaliation? Uh, revelation dance. All right. Roll All the right. hit. Roll the hit, roll the hit, roll the hit, roll the hit. <laughs> that is a dirty 22. That will, in fact, hit Manectric. Please roll super effective ground type damage. Okay, I got two crits on those die. <laughs> I would like two max rolls. Yeah. Uh, okay. Plus seven. So that is a. Uh, 38 points of ground type damage. 38 points of ground type damage as Manectric gets absolutely slammed with a revelation dance. The ground type energy from Jessica's feet just pummeling into the little electric wolf's body. That being said, the voltage activates. Jessica gets recalled. Out comes Patricia. Manectric gets recalled. Out comes Raichu. Raichu. Identifying another opportunity to perhaps switch things up. Well, actually... Roll spikes first. Yeah, I'm rolling. Uh, We're getting to the point where we should be doing this first. <laughs> yeah. 31. 31 points of ground type damage for free. Yeah. As Raichu switches in. Uh, Raichu is feeling very bad. Uh, the spikes are causing it to be all muddy and cut up all over its face and its body. It is in a world of hurt. Um, Raichu sees an opportunity to once again switch up the turn order, which it thinks it needs to do here. Um and it fires off an Electra web towards Patricia. Does a 15 hit? Nope. Patricia dodges the Electra web. How will it retaliate? It's going to retaliate with a... Mm, got a couple options. How low are we thinking Raichu is now? Very low. Yeah, I'm going to do a Brave Bird. Let's see that Brave Bird. Roll the hit. It's 16 on the die and it's plus 7. That's 23. Correct. Um, okay. Patricia flies into the sky and charges down with its fierce beak and sharp talons and it blitzes itself right into Raichu, securing a knockout. Raichu has fainted and is recalled by Watson. Oh, I didn't even roll for damage? Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, I, it was resisted, so I was wondering if it... What's did. your uh, bonus on that attack? I do have... Damage bonus, just what is it? Oh, damage bonus plus seven. Yeah, that was seven HP right you, so. Okay. And then Patricia also does have a Birds of Prey ability. Correct. Which means it does not take recoil when delivering the final blow. That is true. That is one of its special features. Um, next up, replacing the fainted Raichu is once again Magneton, and replacing Patricia is Buford. Spikes damage. Spikes damage, yeah, we gotta start doing this first. Uh, 30. 30 points of ground type spikes <laughs> damage. Watson is being mathematically taken down by this ingenious attack that he has no solutions for. Perhaps he could have taught Rapid Spin or Defog to a Pokemon, but he didn't. <laughs> he didn't know this would happen. Um, Magneton, while not showing very much emotion, you can tell that its uh, metal pieces are having a harder time sticking together. Its magnetic ability is being shrouded by all this ground type spikiness that it's been absorbing. Um, it seems like some of the screws and magnets are beginning to fall off. Magneton fires off a Thunderbolt, as it typically does, towards Buford. Getting a 14 to hit. 14, that does not connect. Magneton is worthless. Uh, <laughs> what will <laughs> Buford do? Yeah, I'll drill peck. All right, let's see that drill peck. Roll to hit. Uh, ooh, 23 to hit. Dirty 23. But... That will connect with Magneton. Roll your damage. Four, yeah, four plus seven, eleven. Eleven points of flying type damage as Buford flies forward and drills their beak into Magneton's metal exterior, over KOing by two points as Magneton is knocked out and returns <laughs> to the Pokeball. Now, a 3v1. Manectric swaps in for uh, Magneton. Jessica swaps in for Buford. Please roll spikes damage. Yes. Uh... Ooh, low this time. 14. As Manectric hits the field, it falls into the spikes and is immediately knocked out. The battle <laughs> is over. Yes! <laughs> Watson says, Schmidt, I've never been so systematically torn down by a trainer before. Yes. <laughs> uh, not a single challenger has defeated me without me landing a single attack besides the very <laughs> first one. Please, I'm so happy. Schmidt, please take this dynamo badge 
Yes, Schmidt is like crying. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh my god, I did it. Uh, <laughs> he hands you a, a neat little badge that looks like a piece of circuitry. Um, he also requests your trainer card. Do you give it to him? Yes. He runs it through a little machine. He takes a look at it. And he says, Schmidt, my boy, with the next badge you receive, you'll be able to carry an additional Pokemon in your party. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank then, you. As a final gift, he reaches into his pocket and gives you 175 Pokemon dollars. Okay. Please write that down. Yes. He says, let alone from a flying type trainer. I can't believe it. I'll have to tell my friends about this one. I know. I was really nervous going into this, but I, I, I had a lot of planning and took a lot of, lot of time to prep for it. Well, it clearly paid off. Our first battle was so close. And then you just come out like this. I don't even know what to think. What's next for you, Schmidt? Uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of traveling with my friends and I'm going to see where, where they want to go. He says, well done. I'm very, very impressed with you. If I had to make any recommendations, I believe Restboro City to the south. Features Roxanne, our youngest gym leader. Uh, she's quite skilled at what she does. Great, great rock type specialist. And uh, yeah, that's probably the closest gym. Absolutely. I'd recommend it. Okay. Yeah. I'll talk with the gang and we'll see where we want to go after that. He does excellent. Now, if you would, you can just take the minecart that you took to get here on your way back. Okay. He says, Schmidt, best of luck with your adventures. Schmidt, like. As he gets in the minecart, kind of elated, like as it gets going, he like puts his hands up like it's a roller coaster. <laughs> Yippee! He does that. Um, Schmidt finds himself back at the front of the uh, Mauville slash Fall Arbor gym. What is his his plan for the rest of the day? Uh, well, he told Symmetra that he was going to uh, link up with her afterwards and talk about how it went. So he's going to go find Symmetra. Okay. He does that. Does where does he go? Uh, he's gonna try the B and B first. Okay. Um, he walks in the B and B. It seems breakfast service is close to ending. It's probably around like ten a.m. or so. Um, he walks upstairs to the rooms, and he notices that all but one of them are currently vacant. The one that okay. is not, the one that is occupied is Elodie's. Is Elodie's okay? So she's gone. Um, before we go anywhere else, I want to make a phone call. Okay. I want to call the guy and see how everything's going with Quacko. You want to call Cle Clementine Sawyer, the lawyer? Cle Clementine Sawyer. Okay. Um, All I can remember is Shucky Bro. Shucky Bro. Yeah. Great. Um, you do that. The phone rings for a little bit, and it rings for a little bit, and then you hear his voice. Schmidt, my boy, I've got some news for you. Good and bad. You ready for it? Okay. Uh -oh. I'm ready. He says, this is perfect. I was just about to call you. In short, the good news is your case is currently indefinitely postponed. Uh, lucky timing, right? If I'm being honest, I was not having a good time negotiating with those Johto lawyers. They knew what they were doing. Right, right. The bad new twist to it is, uh, well, uh, the, the Johto legal system is on pause for a moment because there's been some political trouble next door. Uh, you didn't hear from me, but apparently something shady is going on again in Kanto. Oh, there's, no. There's rumors that a whole city just disappeared and that there's a rebellion forming, but there's a strict embargo of information, as the Cantonians do. There hasn't been any issues between those nations since the war for Jojo's independence, but needless to say, the citizens are all on edge, and all of my contacts in Kanto have gone completely dark. The oh, the, the Jotuans are rightfully nervous, uh, as they tend to be with their neighbors, but maybe you picked a good time to be locked in Hoenn for a while, eh? Uh, I guess. What the fuck? Uh, one last thing, Schmidt. After my last conference with Nicholas's re representative, he left me a message on my voicemail, and, uh, well, I I I'll just play it back for you, all right? Uh, okay. So you can hear that the speaker of your cell phone, like, moves, and there's, like, some static, and it goes to, like, a different phone. And you hear none other than the voice of your former roommate. Listen here, Schmidt, you punk. I'm not letting this uprising in Kanto stop me. Just because the law shut down doesn't mean I will. I will get my duck back. Mark my words, Schmitty. You better watch your back. And the recording ends. Clementine Sawyer says, eh, that kid's a little dramatic, ain't he, huh? Y yeah, I guess so. He says, uh, could you pass a message back on to him? Possibly. 
Clementine says, unfortunately, they don't allow me direct contact with him. I would have to go gotcha. to the lawyers and they're not talking with me right now. Gotcha. Okay. Is there anything else I can do for you, Schmidt? Uh, no, that update was great. And you're doing great work. You're going to get e- extra, extra shuckle time for this. Clementine says, oh, Shucky, Shucky, I can't wait. But Schmidt, I got to be honest with you. I didn't really do anything. There, there's just a political crisis and they stopped investigating the smaller cases. That's all that happened. You know what? You've kept me updated and you've kept me sane. And that's enough. He says, Schmidt, I appreciate you. Uh, one more thing. Unless you think you need me for anything, I'd really appreciate it if you returned this phone to me at some point. Yeah, uh, I'll get it back to you as soon as I can. He says, all right, don't forget to bring that shuckle with you. Yes, sir. And he hangs up the phone. Okay. Schmidt kind of lets out like a sigh of relief, but then another wave of anxiety washes over him. Um, as he lets out that sigh, someone is standing in the hallway. It's Symmetra. Oh. Um, she says, I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, but what was that about? Oh, does Symmetra not know? Did I not tell Symmetra? Oh, shit. <laughs> so uh, Schmidt explains to her the whole situation with uh, Quacko and how, because we talked earlier about how Quacko was originally the roommate and now how the roommate is uh, uh, suing to try to get him back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, so, mm-hmm. so no lying. You just tell her all of that. Yep, just straight up. She says, oh, wow, that's, that's really interesting. You said that, that, that your former roommate worked for your mom, right? Yes. She asks, how is the dynamic with that? Doesn't your mom know where you are? How does she feel about a, a Quacko leaving its trainer? I mean, you two are obviously inseparable, but I feel like that's a little bit of a conflict. Well, he just disappeared one day, so it's, uh, I don't know. I was just taking care of him. It wasn't really planning on becoming a trainer. This was just a vacation. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to go. Sam says, yeah. You know, that's fair. That's reasonable. It's, it's a complicated situation, so I can see why you'd want to want to be updated. Yeah, yeah. Sam asks, so how'd the gym go? It went incredible. Amazing. I'm so happy for you. Uh, I, had a, I had a game plan, and it worked. <laughs> she says, should we celebrate? Yeah. You have any ideas? She says... Well, I know it's a little early, but I, I saw a cute little uh, mimosa bar down the road if you want to go there. Yeah. She says, great. Uh, let me do a thing that we do with all food and drink establishments real quick. <laughs> okay. Oh, easy. This is so easy. Uh, <laughs> this little establishment is like a brunch restaurant that specializes in mimosas, and they're called Mr. Mimosa, which I <laughs> don't know how Schmidt feels about that, actually. I don't think Schmidt pays any attention to the name. Okay. If there's a mime in there, he might be a little wary of it. But um, There's definitely some signage. There's a sign on the door that has a Mr. Mime in sunglasses, and he's, like, holding an orange. And <laughs> uh, there's, you know, it, there, there's a little bit of a mimey theme. Okay. Great. Schmidt, like, <laughs> he's, like, going along with us, but he's, like, hard-eyeing all of the mime signage. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's fair. He almost feels like it's eyeing him back. Um, so you sit down with Symmetra and have some drinks. Do you have any specialized RP or anything you or any checks you want to make or anything? I think he's just going to mention to Symmetra. It's like, do these mimes feel like they're looking at you? She laughs and she says, Schmidt, I don't know what you're talking about. I feel um, like they're, they're, they're looking at me. Like <laughs> Schmidt roll a perception. Okay. Uh, what a perception to crit. You crit it. Yes. That's important because I was going to make it a harder check because you've been drinking. Okay. Um, so Schmidt and Symmetra are having a great time. Uh, they're sitting pretty close to the window. Symmetra's back is to the window and Schmidt is facing outwards. He is a little tipsy. He's not like drunk, but like, you know, he's chatting it up. He's having a good time. He sees out of the corner of his eye uh, out in the street. There is a Pokemon that is floating above the ground and it is small. And it looks like it has like little cat ears and it has glowing red eyes and it locks eyes directly with Schmidt for like, a, for like a solid five seconds. And then it vanishes. Completely disappears. Did you just see that? 
she turns around and she says, what? What'd you see, Schmidt? There's the thing with cat ears and the glowing red eyes and it is behind me. I saw it. Sam's a little concerned and she's like, Schmidt, have you been drinking too much? Uh, you're, you've seen everything that I've drank. She says, yeah, but can you handle it? I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe I have been drinking a little too much. <laughs> She says maybe, but then she continues to drink. Okay. Anything? Schmidt is yeah. also thinking that maybe it's the drinking, so he like switches to water. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Let's be clear. You did crit your perception. So Schmidt did see something, but he can psych mm-hmm. himself out. and Yeah, like, that's, yeah, okay. yeah, he's psyching himself out. Okay, cool. cool, cool Trying cool. to ignore it. <laughs> awesome. Ignore the pain. Very cool. Anything else for Schmidt? Uh, that's all that I had. Unless okay. you have something else. I think, you know, we could extend our day with Symmetra, but the truth is, is that pretty soon Elodie is going to be doing the gym challenge or has started, and then the party is going to be reuniting. So we can just have uh, Symmetra and Schmidt enjoy their time at Mr. Mimosas for the rest of the day until the party meets up with them. Thanks for listening to Schmidt's Gym Challenge in Dunsparce Dram Pop. We appreciate all of your support, and whether you support us on Spotify, Twitter, YouTube, Discord, doesn't matter. We're so glad that you're hanging around. A trend that I've been noticing lately is that a lot of people are coming into our Discord server, and they are forming their own Pokemon Homebrew D&D groups. If that sounds interesting to you, you should definitely join our Discord server, the Calyrex Game Corner. That link can be found at our Linktree page at linktr.ee slash Dunsparce. Just type that into your URL bar and find us on Discord. Special thanks to our latest Patreon supporters, Cody and Acerama. Consider becoming a patron and help us make this show possible. As always, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you for the final gym challenge with Elodie next Tuesday. Okay, no mouse, but I did have a genius idea. Okay. I can use my Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. (laughs) (laughs) Because the right stick, when I plug it in by default, (laughs) works as a mouse. I don't know what the clicks are, but I can move the mouse.